This is the best or worst podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Koji Steven Sakai and M. Martin Mapoma. Second year, second season of Best or Worst Podcast, and I'm Koji. And I'm Martin. And we are without a guest today. It's just me and you, Martin. Yep, reminiscing. I can't believe it's been a year, man. 60, 60 episodes. Wow. I know. It's, awesome. been, it's been pretty crazy. We've gone through lots of different versions uh, and different conversations. And, and yeah. this is kind of a, this is like back in the, a lot of the are younger, but the listeners won't know. But uh, when there's regular TV shows on a TV, they'd have like year end, you know, episodes where they like reminisce about what's mm-hmm. happened on the show. Yep. So this is kind of that episode where we could reminisce and talk and, and we could talk about what's going on now in the world. And, you know, we were just, uh, before the, we got on, we were talking about that my son is in a, in a learning pod, which, which is, is really make, cool, which is really cool. It's making my life way better. If I have three hours, three times a week. <laughs> uh, by my and, you said he's, and you said he's not being a dick. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine a little guy being a dick. Well, well it's, I mean, I think it's just like, there's a lot of anxiety, you know, yeah. just being like being at home. I mean, that's why, like, this is the first time I've ever um, wished we had a, he had a sibling so they could play more. Oh, you, uh, you know what? Yeah, Michelle and I have had that same, same, you know, thought with her. You know. But you know what? Um, yeah, you know, he was having a bit of a hard time, but I got to tell you, the minute he started playing games online with his friends from school, that social interaction, it was huge for him. But I, it was, I think it was huge for him. Yeah. For us, it was the in person seeing them. Because Taka does like, you know, he does basketball online. He does jujitsu online. He does like, he has all these things online, you know? Yeah. See, I mean, uh, so he does see, a ton he, of things. Hey, you said his name. Yeah. That's okay. okay. <laughs> he was, <laughs> but he's done a ton of things. He's done a ton of things. So I just think it's that in person, like the great yeah. thing about the pod. So for those of you who don't know, Learning Pod is like, you know, you get a couple students, you get a couple kids together to create like a uh, kind of like a mini classroom that's yeah. safe in terms of like, you know, we're all socially distant and wearing masks and there's a, but we also have a teacher in person who is able to, is able to uh, um, kind of, you know, teach in, in person in a way that's different than on zoom or, you know, online that's going on now. So it's been really, it's just that, I think that interaction has been really good for him. Is everything okay with your hair? Yeah, you know, I thought I had a, I had a lump on my head. It was this, it was this thing right here. It was right here. It was I could see it, and I was like, "What the heck is that?" So I, you know, sorry. That's okay. So Martin, how's everything going with you? It's going well. It's you know, things are you know, they're they're going okay. Yeah, they're, you know, they're, they're, this this whole COVID thing again, it just sucks. And now you know, folks. So right now we're here in uh, California. I don't know where you're listening, but. These fires are insane. And, you know, seeing pictures of San Francisco looking orange, look like, 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 look, looking at the surface of Mars, it's just otherworldly. And then. South Pasadena looked like that this afternoon. Yeah, well, it did. And, you know, so I'm outside today and I look up and the sun is red. It's red. And, you know, this is just the air quality. I mean, you know, the wife and I have just not been feeling good because this air quality is horrible. Yeah. You know, the day was 214 or something, the air yeah. quality index. Which is madness. Yeah, they're literally saying don't go outside if you don't have to. Yeah. You know, my 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 breathing right now is so labored, it's insane. You know, so it's so besides all of that, that's what's going on. You know, it's just frustrating. <laughs> and you know, just you know, seeing this ass hat on TV every day who can just literally do no wrong now. Well, this, I think it's gonna get and it's gonna get worse, I think, in terms of COVID. Before it gets better, yeah, I think yeah, it's. Uh, I know it everyone's is. trying to trying to get back in the classroom, and everyone's talking about that. But I don't think it's going to happen. You know uh, one of my I friends, mean... one of my friends who works for the uh, infectious disease thing, not the CDC, but kind of does research around it. She's been telling me that it's going to get really bad in like November, October, November, like so yeah. bad that like she th- she even told me that we should stock up because she thinks that there's like the market itself might close. Um, just because it's going to be like really, really bad later. But I don't know if that's true or not, but I think it is, it's going to, you know, it's going to get well, interesting. Well, you know, we're, we're heading that way. I mean, look at, you know, Sturgis, super spreader, you know, they, 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 they're saying that 250,000 people potentially be infected because of what happened in Sturgis. Yeah. And then all these other rallies, you know, I'm, you know, I'm watching these rallies and these people are like, you know, it's a, it's a myth, it's a hoax. And I just, 
well, you know, what's funny. I was, I've been thinking a lot about this. What's funny is if Trump did the bare minimum, if President Trump did the bare minimum, just like, for example, if you just told people to wear a mask and socially distant for a while and not yeah. encourage like coming back so quickly, mm-hmm. if you just did the bare minimum, he would have got reelected. That's the yeah. irony of this whole thing is because everyone would have been like, oh, he did such a great job. Like, and, but the reason he, he's been calling it a hoax and all this shit is because he, he was scared that it's going to hurt his reelection. But in reality, it's, all he had to do was just do like, and that was just the bare, I mean, just the bare minimum. I'm not even talking about doing like planning and doing yeah. other stuff. Just being like, I mean, just if he could have like stopped, like not done this. Yeah, he would have, he would have, because he would have gotten all the independents, right? He would have got all the people on the fences. Oh, he's, he, 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 we didn't know if he could do it or not, but he did it, you know? And, and he didn't even do that. And he couldn't even do the bare minimum. Oh. He just fucked it up even worse. And, you yeah. know, people are still doubling down on him. You know, it's, he did, yeah, he did. That's, you know, and then Bob Woodward's book comes out yeah. with recordings of him saying all those things and they're, and watching people explain it away. Although, is just like mind boggling. It's you know, it's not mind boggling anymore. None of none of this stuff surprises me. The only the only thing that put a smile on my face is that whole boat parade when those boats sunk. Yeah. You know, although, it's that that just you know, that just that perked me up. Although I've heard from there. Republican friends who have uh, who are anti Trump that they believe that there's like a movement within the Republican Party to to get rid of him or to actually get to like take him down. Um like Definitely. senators and stuff. I've heard a lot of that about, you know, because for example, like after Labor Day, they, 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 they were like, my people I know were telling me that they need to get through Labor Day and then they needed to, and that's why like, you know, like for example, they didn't, like none of the generals came out and said that he didn't say any of those things about the soldiers. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, a lot, there's so many more leaks now, right? Like, yeah. you know, high profile administration yeah. people and that they're all just, it's coming out way more than ever before. And that they think that, like, even like the idea that the Woodward thing was, uh, was uh, T- uh, Tucker Carlson said it was uh, Lindsey Graham that set it up. Wait, right? wait, what? That's what Tucker believes. That that was Lindsey Graham that, and you know, Lindsey's like was like practically in love with McCain, right? He was like, yeah. I mean, the rumors he's always been gay. I, I don't know if you heard that, but he's like, <laughs> he's basically like, I mean, he like acts like he's a, a gay dude. Like, no offense to gay people, he you should be whoever you want to be. Is, but, he, is he married? I don't know. Oh no, he's not married. So that's he's not married. married. He's like always, he's like been BFF with uh, John McCain. He like loved John McCain. I mean, he like literally loved him. And so, yeah, then all of a sudden, like after he died, like he didn't say anything. And then like now the whole conspiracy thing is that he's, he set him up for the whole Woodward thing. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but, but it's really interesting to kind of see. I think that there's going to be, uh, there's going to be some reckoning going on soon. But anyway, let, let's get into our episode. What is the. I thought we were into it. Yeah, no, well, let's get into the kind of talking about the show itself. You know, we're the yeah. best or worst. Sure, so let's talk sure. about the best or worst of the show. What, what are some of your best, best moments from the show? Or do you want me to go first? I can go. Okay. Some, what my, is, best, some of my best moments. I, I, I think talking to Christian Stolte was one of my favorites. Christian, I mean, they, they all have been Christian and talking to uh, Jen Salata. That was awesome. You know, those are two of my favorites because, um, you know, as an actor and, you know, being an actor, you're always, you're always getting rejected for the most part. And, you know, and, and, and even though you learn to deal with that kind of, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's rejection. You get getting turned up for roles, there's other things. You know, the daily grind of being an actor is tough. And so, you know, see people who've done very well for themselves that I've known for a long time is, is a nice thing. I'm not, I'm not a hater. You know, I, I wish no, everyone nothing but success. And then, and to see Christian doing as well as he is, and, you know, him, when I first moved to Chicago, being my, you know, my, the, the guy running the camera for the casting director, you know, for him to say, you know, we, we reminisce a lot. And to hear him say some of the things he said about me, you know, that, you know, Brody's office loved me, loved having me come in. They didn't know what to expect from me every time I came in. I always, you know, I always came prepared and, you know, I put it down. That was, that was, I have to admit, that was really nice to hear. You know, to him to say that me and a couple of other guys were the best auditioners, I don't know, it didn't help me much, were the best auditioners he thought in the city. I thought that was really, really nice to hear. So, and then to hear him talk about, God, being on set and, you know, when he was getting the role and having to go to that whole fire, fire, fireman drill thing and thinking, I don't think I can do this. And then realizing that, you know, this is what everybody in their life wants. You know, that, that, that was, it was really, it's really, it was really great seeing his journey. You know, hearing his journey from him, you know, because I think it's the first time that 
you know, I've known someone like that. He's, I mean, he's been on that show for 10 years. To hear him talk about going from, you know, I don't know if he was struggling, but going from what he was doing to doing what he's doing now, it was a great, it was a great transition. It was a great, it was a great process to hear him talk about, you know, and that, and how much he would love to, uh, wait, did he talk about that on the show? Maybe I shouldn't talk about that part. Um, anyway, it was great to see. That was nice. And then of course, Jen. I mean, I love Jen. Jen's a great, great human being, you know, and, you know, she did, you know, Cobra Kai, The Office, all those things. And she actually did, uh, you know, she directed two episodes of the new Cobra Kai coming out next year, but she's a great person. And, you know, giving people like that a platform is always a nice thing. You know, it's because uh, they're, they're both such humble people, too. So those are two of my favorites, for sure. So one of the things uh, that's going to have to happen in, se in season two is that you're going to have to start acting. Season two? Yeah, this season, the second yeah. season. We're going to have yeah. you, we're going to, instead of talking about acting, you're going to be acting. That's yeah, well, you, 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 you know, you're, hey, yeah. I'm going to put it on you, but yeah, you know, if I'm not too <laughs> old, remember? Oh, I'm so you happy to get it. that one. You can't put it on me. <laughs> no, I'm gonna put it. No, I can't. Of course not. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just saying that I was really looking forward to doing that movie. I know, and you are like, oh, you're too old. I was like, oh. The oh, actress oh. is like, like younger, like 20 years younger than me. <laughs> oh shit. No. Yeah, so that would be weird. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work with, you know. I would be an old. I would be like an old, like. Yeah, I would be creepy. With him, right. So. You, you know, it's funny because, <laughs> because um, I auditioned for uh, Say the Last Dance and. When I listened for that, when I listened to that movie, at the time I was 30, 31, 32. And the guy was like, no, no, you're too old. And even then I was like, wait, what? And, and then I, you know, I, I, you know, I, then they invited me to be a reader. So I sat me up, this little director just hating on him, looking at him like, you know what, you didn't put me in this movie. And it was so funny because one of the guys that auditioned for the movie, I thought he just did an okay job and he got the role. And he's done well for himself, but it's just, it's, it was really funny. It's really funny being on the, on the, direct, on the director's side of the chair and auditioning actors. Yeah. I, but, I'm, yeah. I'm so anyway, I was too old. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. So we, we, yeah, we, don't, decide, we already know by the time you walk in. It's not oh, like yeah, of course. No, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So don't pump me up next time. Get me all excited. Just get told I'm an old fart. Sorry. I did not need to hear that. <laughs> After all these years, I was like, oh, man. You need to get back into it though. I do, I do, I do. I am. I'm going to. <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously. Is there are problem. There are problem. I mean, you know, as an older dude, there's probably a lot of like. Actually, there's probably a lot of roles. No, there are. There because are. Because I think there's like you know there's a dearth of of people fifty plus that are good, that are that are actors that are like mm -hmm. not like Morgan Freeman or some famous or like you know famous person. Yeah, who actually could carry a scene, and there's like, there's keep, like, I should keep this, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, because I, I, I mean, like, but seriously, there's like not like a lot. I mean, every movie has like, you know, a father or a grandfather or you know, a CEO or you know, what I mean, there's like people that have to be like, it, like that have to look older, right? Yeah. They have to look like they're in those positions, and so yeah. you know, there is a there is a place because I, I've had I've done searches for like African American plus fifty, I've done searches for Asian American plus fifty. Not since I've known you, right? Just no, not since I've uh, known you. But I've done it in the past, and I've like, and it comes up with like the same five names. Oh, really? Yeah, it's always like the same five or six people, and you know, because I mean, think about how many people there are. Like, you know, people. you're right. There's, there's, there's really not a lot because because by that you know, time everyone's quit. Yeah, they have, and right. you know, it's funny because, God, you know what? You're right. Yeah, because I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of actors, African American actors that I knew. Most of the guys were like a few years younger than me. I mean, there's guys like, you know, there's Leonard Roberts. Um, you know, my buddy Darwin was on season two of uh, Cobra Kai. I was so happy for him. I, and he's sitting there, you know, with um, Ralph Macho and everyone else. And I was like, wow, he's in, you know, he's, and that, that character, I'm assuming he's like in his 40s, you know, late 40s or whatever. But, you know, I'm trying to think, I think you're right. I don't know, of all the actors that I knew, that were my age, I, I, don't, I don't think, look, look at me, I'm trying to think of who I've seen on TV lately. Nobody. I haven't not, seen any of them on, yeah. besides, you know, you know, yeah, Jesus, I never thought about that, dude. Well, especially I mean, people of color. Yeah, I mean, no, exactly. Especially people of color, there's a lack of, there's a lack of, like, that 
age because I mean, there's a dearth of like 18 to like 25 year olds. Yeah. Adele's, always, right. Adele's always said you should be yeah. back. Yeah, because those are the he's, people he's who always, are like. He's always said that. Yeah, because so you'll always like at least get a look at an audition because yeah, they'll feel like bring everyone in who's like over forty, you know, like or yeah, over forty five. Right, they do, they do get, they do give up because there's not a lot of people. Oh. But that's why, like right, you go. know, that's why, like like as a producer, you know, a lot of like my goal is always to do non SAG. Don't tell SAG, but um, <laughs> but like you know, the problem if I have an actor that's over the age of thirty, there's no way I could do non SAG because. The people who are over thirty who aren't SAG aren't aren't good. Yeah. I could find an I could find an eighteen year old. I could find an eighteen year old yep. who's like sa- like not SAG who just got here who's good. Yeah. Right? If I look hard enough, but yeah. I can't find a fifty year old who's never who's not who's not SAG because those people are you know they're not Awful. good. You know yeah, that's they, a really good, that's a really good point because they say that if you've been if you work hard, they say if you've been in the business working hard for ten years and you haven't gotten your card, don't bother. Yeah. They're like you're not you're you're not you're not cutting it. Yeah. And that's very true. I mean, I, you know, I, I, when I started acting, I got my SAG card within, wow, within a year. And I remember my agent, you know, the agents that I had saying, don't get your SAG card. You're not going to work. And then I had one great agent, you know, the agency was like, that's stupid. You're here. This is your profession. You need to get your SAG card. You will I, work. I hate SAG so much. You know? I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm SAG <laughs> after ad equity, you know? So that's a good point. Yeah, if you're 50 years old and you don't have your SAG card, you're not getting cast in anything. Well, that, but that's why they're not. Nobody's even looking for those people. You know, like yeah. I can't even pretend to do a non-SAG with 50 year olds because yeah. it's just not going to work. There's like no way that works, right? Mm-hmm. But like again, I, I could find an 18 year old. I could definitely find an 18 year old who's good. Yeah, because they it's just got here, or, right? What? He's a good talk. He's made, <laughs> you made, and you know, that's a really good point that you made. I, I never is. really. That's one of the angles that I never thought about. That be a ton of people. Because you could play, like, you could probably play, like, 40 to, like, 60, you know? Like, if you, like, especially if you keep your beard or, you know, you could probably play, like, a really wide range of, of yeah. like, age, which is, like, a really great thing because that means that, you know, you could be, like, you could be, like, you know, if you play, especially if you play, like, a little old, you could probably be, like, you know, like, play, like, a grandpa, like, a young grandpa. <laughs> Right, like, boy, let me tell you something. When I was yeah. growing up, with a little bit of act, yeah, with a little bit of acting and a little bit of makeup yeah. and stuff, you could and clothes, or you could be like a young, like you know, you could be like a little bit older of a dad, like you are, but you know, it's not even like <laughs> I'm <know>. an old dad. <laughs> well, but like you know, like in your forties, basically. Yeah, right? I could do that. So, all you know, right. Anyway, no. So my two best, my those some, those some of my best moments. Uh, how about you? Some of your best moments. Cause you, you man, you've been a you you grind so well on this on this stuff. I mean, you've got three other podcasts that you do, and no, two other podcasts, two other passage podcasts that you do, and you know, every time I leave the show, I feel so insignificant because you're a great podcaster, you're a great dad, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Actually, so I brought him, I brought him my son for episode fifty nine right before this episode for a five minute podcast. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, you know what? I you know you know how that, much I love that kid. I want to do. Person. I want to do an in person one. We didn't want it. Uh, Oh. at the studio here because I was, I was testing out some new microphones so we just i would love to get on a, on a podcast with, you, with your son and you no. i think that would be great <laughs> <laughs> we, we, can get bug, we can get bugging on it too we did yeah that'd be great we did an emergency podcast 59 and then we did one for guy code as well so you know we should do one with with both of them on guy code a special special that'd be cool they, I'm, sure just, son, I'm sure my son would love it we did a money we did money advice for the guy code one recently with him and i was oh, like really I was like, marry rich. That was like my number one piece of advice. The best Boy, advice gonna ever. kill you, dude. No, it's the best advice ever, dude. Marry, marry rich. You could be stupid or you could be smart and you can make, you can still be married rich. Uh, in a no fault, in a no fault, in a no fault state. No prenuptial. Can I just, can I, can I just nod my head slowly? Yeah. My we talked about, thing. we talked about no prenuptial. <laughs> I was like, don't ever sign a prenuptial agreement unless you have more money than her. Marry rich. That's your advice. To the oh, my advice. <laughs> marry rich. Dude, uh-huh. it's like, like, you know, it's what I always say about money is that if you, you know, money doesn't bring happiness for sure. No, but if it you're going to be a lot of peace, but if you're going to be on, if you're going to be unhappy, I'd rather be rich and unhappy than poor and unhappy. Yeah. Right? Cause rich and unhappy is like, Hey, let's go to Paris for the week, for the winter, you know, unhappy, <laughs> unhappy, poor. It means what the fuck are we going to eat? Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I think I'd rather be like, oh, well, I'm so miserable in Paris. <laughs> I'm so miserable in the Bahamas. I'm so miserable, you know, like oh. on this cruise ship or whatever. You know, uh, you know, the wife would kill me, but man, it's so funny because Grace Chunk, <laughs> some of his, uh, some of his, um, 
the things that he considers normal, most people wouldn't consider normal. You know, it's so funny when he, and he's, he's very innocent. You know, he doesn't think, you know, like he's not a snob in any way, but it just some of the things he, you know, that he asks for is, you know, because, you know, when, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting I know, like, like don't you say a word. With my son but, in uh, class, my son in class, like with his friends, I'm like, oh, I think her family's rich. I'm like her family's rich. I'm like, oh, she's not very rich. We don't want to talk to her. <laughs> oh, dude, I'll tell you right now, the first, the first woman that this kid brings home, oh, it, 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 she's gonna get put to the meat grinder. I'll tell you that right now. No, I, I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't want to do. Friend, it. I wouldn't want to do anything like that because that just makes him like him more. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, if I, the more I dislike the person, the more I'm gonna be, act like I love him. Really? Oh, yeah. And I, and I, I know that thinking. <laughs> if, the, if the parents love who you're dating, you're just like, wait, what? Right, there's something wrong with this person. Yeah. I think that, like, I'll be like, dude, this is a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like, she's awesome. Bring her over more. <laughs> that would def. That would def. If that happened to Bug, he would definitely be like, no, she's not coming back again. <laughs> if wife fell in love with who he was dating. He'd be like right away, like no, 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 something's not right. Here. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. So you don't. Like, you have to do the opposite if you're do in the opposite. Opposite, yeah. I don't know if she can do that. Uh, she she can't pretend to like somebody if she doesn't like them. Oh. That would be to be funny though. All right, so my best. Uh, all right, yours. My best moments from the podcast are probably I love you know I love uh, I love really our early episodes. That's what I love, yeah, don't like, make, don't make it deeper than mine. I'll be, I'm gonna get mad as hell. I'm just kidding. Oh well, I I love like your episode, which was episode two. Um, cause I didn't know yeah. that about you. So that was really surprising. Um, to find out all the backstory about yeah. that girl yeah. and your, your, ex, your, your girlfriend, girlfriend at the time. Right. Yeah. Um, and just to find all that, that was really powerful. I didn't know that. I felt like I got closer to you. Um, oh, thank you. And the other one, you know, the other one was, um, or uh, Layla's episode. I know that was like, I think episode one was it actually episode one. Oh man, that's you right. Know? Even though I didn't oh, know her, cool. I felt like yeah, I was that like, was a great one. Yeah, where she talked about like the the camping trip, or not, it wasn't camping, but it was like the kind of the the, the outward bound thing, kind of like or well, bad kid camp. Yeah, like, outward, outward bound is nothing like that. Oh, uh, that's it like a right. Bad kid, it was like a boot camp kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Build for... the fire, and I just. It, you know that really didn't, like didn't she have to dig a dig something and she, she had to start a fire under her like bag so she'd be warm or something yeah right and so she i just and just the challenge of it and just hearing that um and i think one of the reasons i think both of those is because i recently transcribed both of those so i think it's like in my head but yeah but i think that those episodes were really like those episodes were really great in terms of hearing those stories and finding out, you know, like, I, I feel like I'm, the funny thing about the show is I feel very close to the guests a lot of times after. Yeah. You know, and I feel like I know sure. them, like, like with Layla, I feel like I know her, even though I've like, I've only pretty much talked to her on the show and once in a while yeah. in the gym. But She's very gone. Rare. She, she moved to uh, Texas. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I see her, I, I see her like video, I see her things on Facebook or Instagram, but yeah, you know, but yeah, it's kind of, it's yeah. kind of crazy. No, she's great. Oh, yeah. the wife liked her too, because which was always cool. Yeah, she's really, she's really, she was a really nice and interesting person. What about uh, what are some yeah, of the she, some of the worst moments? It's got the finger. <laughs> uh, worst moments. Uh, uh, and we're of course going to be political well, what's, on our answers, of course. Um, uploading stuff to uh, the website. I'm so <laughs> bad at that. It's so it's because you know I I, I hate to not feel because. I mean, you're, you're a writer, and so you being in front of the computer is second nature for you. And, and, you know, that stuff comes really fast. For me, it's like I'm one fingering trying to, you know, I'm watching the, the, the video on how to upload and all that stuff, and I get so mad at myself, you know. And now, I, you know, like today, everything you showed me, I didn't do one thing. Not one thing even remotely like that. From the minute well, you started off, you're like, you edit. I was like, yep, wasn't there. You have the homepage. Yeah, stuff. I had to have. I do, but still, I just, I was just watching it. I'm like, oh my god. So that's 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 one of my worst moments about because I can't, you know. That's one of the worst moments that I have. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't really have. Uh, I mean, worst moments um, when uh, the 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 lady, the uh, how old was her name from San Diego, the writer? Oh, Margaret. Margaret, when she. Uh, teared up uh not a worse moment but that was oof that was you know and and 
if it was TV, people would consider that TV gold because yeah. clearly you and I did not expect that reaction from her. And it was so, it was so heartfelt and honest, but that just gutted me, you know? And, and, and again, Margaret, if she's ever listened, not in a bad way, it just, no, it no. was so honest and it was so honest and personal that, yeah. you know, you know, I was looking for a moment to kind of segue and, and lighten the mood and I was just stumped. Yeah. Yeah, what was funny was about that, stumped. well, not funny, but what was interesting to me about that moment was it's like, I, I know it's a great moment, but it's also not what I want to do. Like, I don't want to put people on the spot to like make them feel bad or make them just cry. I, or, yeah. You know I mean? Like, that's not know, like, that's yeah. not the point of this podcast. No, exactly. But, but it's like, that's, but at the same time, I know that that's like the best moments in terms yeah. of like having, like, that's a real moment. It's not like a, yeah, it was a very, moment, very real moment, which is what I like about it. But at the same time, I always feel bad if, you know, like, I don't want to make people cry. I don't want to make people like feel bad or, you know, like, so. you know, yeah, you know, and it's funny because, you know, mo people, I feel like some of the people that we have on the show or just in general, people will be very, people will keep, play a lot of stuff close to their chest. They keep lots of close to their chest. Well, it's and public. so when we get, you know, <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, exactly. And so I think a lot of times people might, might be a little nervous, like really be forthcoming with their worst, worst, worst. But I mean, she nailed it. You know, yeah. I mean. Well, because it's not bad. I mean, nobody could be like, oh, that's a bad thing. Right. Like, no, nobody would come her. on and say, like, I, like, raped a girl because, like, that's just, like, like, that's not a, there's nothing, like, you know, like, redeeming about something like that. But if you're sick, yeah. you're sick, right? That's why we've gotten a lot of people who talk about be being sick, right? I mean, there was yeah. DC, there was, uh, there was um, Margaret, there's a couple others yeah. that talked about being, that sick, sickness was that, like, that moment, right? That was crazy with DC, because he's like, I was like, wouldn't you know if you if you have cancer? He's like, no. Most people don't know they have it. Yeah. Until you know, until they go in for something. You know, he yeah. thought he was losing weight, he's looking great, and he gets told he has a baseball sized lump in his colon. Yeah. I was like, you didn't feel that? And, you're, and he's like, you don't feel that? That's not how it works. I was like, wow. You know, that was, that was, yeah, that was that was crazy. You know, my but worst. you know, oh, yeah. No, you're worse. I was gonna say so. Who my worst? What is? And this is not specific, but it's more of in general. There's been a couple of times on the show, I won't name any names, where in the middle of a person's answer, I thought, yeah, we should have asked the other, other one. We should, we should have asked, like, I, like, you know, not, not because of their answer per se, but just because as they started talking, I was like, no, I think I would. But then by the time they're already talking, I just yeah. was like, I mean, it's too late to like re-ask them. Yeah. But it's such a, I mean, that's, that's like the biggest challenge, I think, is figuring out like, if we want to hear the best or the worst moment from people, because yeah. it's like, we're on the spot, first of all, you know? Um, and I think that, you know, like a little bit behind this, behind the curtain for the audience is that we mm -hmm. don't, we don't pre-ask people. Like we don't yeah. actually know what they're going to no, say, we don't. No, we which don't. is, which makes it's, it's, it's a challenge, right? Cause the, yeah. on one hand, it's like, if we really wanted the best in terms of like our best story, whether good or bad, we would mm -hmm. ask them beforehand. Yeah. But, but because, part of our conceit of our show is that we kind of do it on the spot. Yeah. It sometimes doesn't land as well as it could. Like yeah. we do both stories. And so I think that that's always like the biggest regret I have a lot of like, and I'd say like five or six guests off the top of my head where I'm just like in the middle of it, even before they were started talking, I was like, Oh man, we should ask the other one. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, it's funny you say that because I agree actually, if I'd say one of my worst moments, there have been times where, and actually I'm not gonna mention any game names, but Early, even early on, there was one, and you know what I'm talking about. And I was just like, what? I was like, oh, how is this a worst moment? And it was, you know, the, the lead up, you know, when, when that person said what happened, I was like, whoa. And then when they started talking about it, I'm like, yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah, but I, re like. I recently re-listened to that episode, and uh -huh. it, was actually, it was actually pretty traumatic. Uh, yeah, it was it actually, was, no, it, it was really it traumatic. Was, I mean, it was traumatic. If that happened to a kid, that would be like the most traumatic thing in your life. Right? Yeah. Was, <laughs> but I was still like, you know, you, think, you, you said it and then when you described it, I was like, mm. no, it was, it was still like, scary. No, still very scary, but yeah. it was, it was traumatic. I mean, like I re-listened to that recently. So I you should re-listen re to, re to that episode because I think it would, I think it would change it. Because I, I kind of felt the same way and then I re-listened to it. 
and it totally changed my opinion. But yeah, but um, I'll so the, the other thing, um, the other kind of uh, worst moment for me was I, I just my episode was just like the one where you asked me about my worst moment, and I felt like I I didn't do it justice to my story, my worst moment. <laughs> Wait, what was your worst moment? Um, me trying to kill myself. Um, but bro, wait. Wait. But like, because the whole because the actual story is way more is a way stronger story in terms of a lot. There's like a lot of things, and I kind of just I play. I I think I was being weird at the time. I didn't really want to talk about it, even though I talked about yeah. it. Um, yeah. Um. So I think like I could have done a better because I've talked. I mean, I've I've done like lectures on everything that happened. So I, I'm like, it's not like I'm usually like I've written book. I've written a book about what happened. So it's you not have? like I'm afraid of writing about it. It's just for some reason on that episode. I just wasn't like, I was reticent. I was more reticent than I should have been um, to talk kind of like, give truth to kind of what happened. But you were very, you were very aloof for sure. Yeah. And I think that you that's were very, what, yeah, you were very sort of like nonchalant about it. And I was yeah. like, wow. Yeah. So it was a weird. And I remember thinking, you're like, he's clearly gotten over this. It was a weird, it was a weird moment. I don't know what was going on. Something was going on. I think, because I re listened to that episode recently too. And that Ooh. was just a weird, like, it was, I was just, my answers were not my normal answers. Like, so. One of the things about like, you know, when I've gone on film festival tours and stuff or mm -hmm. with, my, with a movie, you have pat answers, right? Like every person asks the same questions, whatever city I'm in. And so it's just like the same thing with this. It's like I had the same answers, but I didn't say it in the way I normally would say it, which mm -hmm. I thought was a really weird thing. Um, but, but one of the things I wanted to ask was, you know, I think especially now that I'm going through a lot of these episodes and kind of re-listening to, to do some of the transcribing and stuff, it's like, what are the, some of the things that we could do to improve our show? Uh, I'll go first. You know, first I've noticed, I've noticed a lot of my verbal picks that I do that I have to work on. So that's been interesting to kind of rehear all of them and kind of have to work on it a lot more. Your things verbal like ticks, you said? Yeah, ticks. Yeah. Okay. Like things like you know, saying like for example, like. or I have like thirty thoughts at one time in my head. So a lot of times in the mid thought, I stop my thinking and move on to the next thing. Mid thought. Yeah. So I need to work on those kinds of things. Um, and a lot of times I think the other, th like the other thing I do is I spend a lot of time thinking about questions to ask people. And mm -hmm. so I'm not always listening to what they're saying at the time. So I need to work on listening, using my listening ears. Because a lot of times I just want to talk. What are some of the things that you want to do to improve? I, I, I want to be a little more succinct in my, in my, in my delivery for sure. Uh, I would, you know, it's, I, I, I'd like, to, I think I'd like to tighten up my, my, my delivery a little more. I'd like, to, you know, I'd like to be, I feel I'm, I feel like I'm not quite on top of what I'm supposed to be doing for the show. You know, I, um, I want to get, I want to get a lot better at the behind the scenes stuff, which you're really good at. I think for me, you know, like the transcribing, the, you know, the uploading stuff, um, make the show better. I'd like to. I'd like to continue to get very interesting guests, you know? I think that yeah. the more, um, I don't know, I mean, the more accomplished some of our guests are, I, I, I think the more, the more, uh, the more spiritual, I guess, some of their answers are. Like, when you asked uh, the husband, and, the boyfriend and girlfriend couple um, we had on their oh, older than in New York Allison about the five senses. Yeah. And, uh, they're not a couple, by the way. No, they're not. Oh, no, they're no. not. Okay. No. But one, one of the, <laughs> she's one, he's a house if, guest. Yeah, I forgot if, if, we, if it was either him or her. They had a really interesting answer to something we asked them. I can go back and listen to it, but you yeah, know, you, guests like that are always cool. Yeah. And oh, you know what? Um, one more, real quick. One favorites all time was uh, from South Africa. Oh, your boss. Oh, uh, oh, um, Anne. Anne. Anne Burroughs. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great one. You know, and if people, if people are listening to uh, this and watching this, I would highly recommend uh, watching the episode we did with Ann Burroughs on South Africa, who was put in prison, you know, with Nelson Mandela at the time. That's, that was an amazing episode. Yeah, I think um, it was episode people like, like 40s. Something yeah. Something in the 40s, I think. People like that, you know, those, people like that are great to have on. So I, I'd like to get, you know, I'd like to get, um, I'd like to continue to get a lot of people like that on. It'd be a lot of fun. Actually, so I, like I, I do love those people, but I also love the regular people because I think that their conversations are, are, in a lot of ways, less, less scripted. Like for example, like I, I go on podcasts a lot, 
And the stories I tell people are stories that I've already thought about. Like I never mm-hmm. tell people anything that I'm, that I'm not out there already because I'm so used to talking to people. Right. Yeah. But the great thing about people who ha- aren't, haven't done that is that you get like an, you get like a little bit more honest answers. I mean, mm-hmm. you either get two, you get two, like you get one who's like really holding it back or you get people who are just like, let it fly. And I think it yeah. depends on the type of person, but you know, like even with like my son, like, you know, me and him are doing media. I work with him on media. Like, for example, I talked to him about like, Hey, when you're, you know, when you're being interviewed for anything, you have to, you have to take a second to think about the things that you say. Because once it's said, you know, you can't yeah, it's it, out there. You can never take it back. You, like, like, I mean, I've seen it. Go ahead. And especially like if it's like like it, like me, I, I'll delete it if he says something like, you know, bad. But I was mm-hmm. like, when you're somewhere else, they're not going to delete it. That's what they want yeah. you to do. You know, and yeah. they want, they're trying to get you to say something inappropriate or say something about like your friend or someone you know. You know, that's why I like <laughs> a lot. Like I go on podcasts, people ask me, oh, what do you think about the new Mulan movie? And I'm like, oh, it's great. What do you think about it? You can always edit it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, because, I, because the thing is, like, I don't know if I'm going to work with Disney. I don't know if I'm going to work with one of the director, producers, ah, actors. Okay. Like, yeah. that's why I never, like, I, I usually don't talk about movies. I don't talk about things yeah. that, that Have are. Have you seen it? Yes, I've seen it. Um, but that's, you like, the thing. Like, <laughs> but that's, like, the thing. Like, I mean, so I'm, I'm always constantly thinking. So what I don't want is, like, not to get a job because I said something on a stupid podcast about something. And that ruins like, and then like, like I like, I get it. I meet somebody and they're like, yeah, I would hire you, but you said my movie was fucking shitty. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like that's why when people ask me about the movie, I'm like, hey, it was great, because it's just it's just easier. Because I've been in the situation, I've been in the opposite situation where, you know, where people tell me to my face they love my movie, and then I hear an interview, and they talk shit about it, and mm-hmm. I'm just like, well, why would you lie to me? Like just, you know, or why would you say it out loud? You know, like yeah. it's weird. It's just a weird, awkward moment, and I'm not that, like I, I, I don't take it that personally, but it's just I, I take what I take personally is like, why did you lie to my face? Yeah, right? that, or, that, that, I, that I totally understand. You know, and then make it public, like then could turn around and make it public. That's what pisses me off. You know, because I would never, yeah. make, I'll never like make like that's why I like on those gotcha shows. That's what they're trying to do, right? Yeah, get you to talk shit about like the other person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, that was fun. This is yeah, this fun. So this is episode yeah. sixty. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna do season two. So we're we've already recorded a couple episodes. Actually, the Darren and, and Leslie are not actually. So nobody's seen that yet. That's the next two episodes. Okay. So so everything you just heard about those two, pretend you heard it after <laughs> the next two because we record these out of order a little bit and yeah. they come out early and stuff so that we have enough time. Yep. That was fun. All right. Well, thank you, Martin. This was oh, great. Thank you, Koji. You know, and uh, everybody keep listening and make sure to tell somebody about it. All right, guys.